Okay, next it is time to get our new wires soldered on to the solder terminals. The kit MagnaPan sends you includes new soldering hardware. They include solder as well and some brief instructions on how to uh, get this done. The first thing we're going to do is remove the old solder posts. We're going to be removing the ones that are covered in this uh, silicone sealant right here. We're going to keep this uncovered one intact because it's holding the uh, the inductor wire and the uh, the hot the positive wire and this capacitor. So there's really not any reason to have to redo this one because it doesn't have any uh, any any uh, speaker wire going through it. So we'll leave that one alone and we'll start by removing these guys right here. To do that. They're just riveted in. You can take a flathead screwdriver, start prying away, and uh, eventually they will they'll come up and uh, separate from the body of the speaker. Next thing you'll do is take some wire cutters and you'll cut off the wires you're going to need to keep, like this yellow uh, ground wire. Cut off as little as you can, leave as much wire as possible on all ends. At this point, I'm just cleaning up my work and removing that old capacitor, and I'm going to take down the ends of those old rivets also. So, when we test this old 12 microfarad capacitor, we see that the capacitance is showing up as about 25 microfarads. That is very far out of tolerance and it's not going to be a capacitor we want to use. If we look at the new capacitor and we test to make sure it's good, put our leads on the capacitor. Exactly 12 microfarads. That's a very nice capacitor. It's definitely one we're going to use. So the battery on the camera is dying and I'm not able to record everything, but what I've done since is I have put a little bit of an extension on this ground wire just so I have enough wire to reach exactly where I need to. And I've also taken some sandpaper and I have used it on the, uh, the base wire because the base wire is a, uh, it's like speaker coil wire. It's, it's got a non-conductive shield on it. So what you'll want to do is take a piece of uh, I used 320 grit because that's what I had around and uh, I took each wire and I just kind of put it underneath something hard and then what you can do is just go like that and you can see the, uh, the conductive and you can see the non-conductive shield has uh, been scraped off. You'll be able to get a good solder connection that way. Make sure you do it on multiple sides too because just getting the top is only going to get that one section of the wire. So now what I'm doing is I'm basically going to start adding things one wire at a time. I left this capacitor lead on because what it's going to allow me to do is make a connection right there and then when I put this new capacitor on I can just go to those to those two holes right there that I've got the leads pointing at. So let's start with that first hole right there. One thing I am going to note is that I'm going to be using two different kinds of solders during this. I have my normal lead solder and then I have the solder that MagnaPan gave with the kit. I don't know what kind of solder this is but it is definitely different from this and it doesn't flow quite as nicely as this. So I'm going to use my lead solder on anything that's just a general wire connection, but I'm going to use the MagnaPan solder on anything related to the, uh, the, the base and treble wires. So I'm starting with the wires in which I'm using the lead solder because I have to move that board around a little bit. I want as little movement on those diaphragm wires as possible during this whole process since they're kind of fragile. So I solder those on with the lead solder. It works nicely. And now I'm ready to get my diaphragm wires inside of the solder terminals. 
so I kind of worked them in very carefully. I got to bend the base ones a little bit because I had them a little bit long. The tweeter ones, since they're uh, not having a conductive coating on them, you can just pull them right through to the correct length and then start soldering. Um, I think an 800 degree tip would have worked better here. I'm using a 700 degree tip and I had to use a lot of heat to get the solder to flow nicely onto these solder terminals. So be patient, make sure you have a really good looking solder joint at the end of it because it's going to be important for a good connection. At this point I'm checking for resistance to make sure that it's not an open circuit. And here I see that I've got 5 ohms at the terminals which is exactly what you want. So that means I'm ready to trim back the wires in the behind the solder posts. I get some wood glue on there so I can glue it down and the last step is to put some sealant on the uh, solder terminals. You clean them with acetone, put down the sealant, and then uh, after that you just let it dry. Alright, it's another brand new day. Now that we've got our wires soldered and everything worked out down there, it's time to get the speaker ready for reassembly. The first thing you'll want to do is take your uh, thin wood strips here and you'll want to figure out exactly where they were before they were removed. So the way you do that is you look at where these staples are and you line them up with where they uh, originally were on the on the speaker because you can't just hammer these in very easily. You're going to want to find where they were before and just kind of work them in very carefully otherwise the staples might uh, they might come out of the wood a little bit and it won't look uh, won't look very good if that happens you can see there's one of the staples right there once you've taken note of where those strips are supposed to go just uh, remove them and set them off to the side in a way where you will remember where exactly they're supposed to go next it's time to put the new sock on the magnet pan Unfold it and find the uh, opening at the bottom like this. So here's your opening. Next, we're going to take it, start from the, we're going to start at the top. Make sure you've got the top, double check. And uh, find the open end of the stock and uh, work it onto the speaker. At this point you may notice that Macapan has given you a little bit of extra length. So now what it's time to do is put this back on your stands and trim off the excess uh, material. So here I'm trimming off the excess material. I'm using a box cutter. I found that to be easier than scissors. And now I'm taking a staple gun. I think you're supposed to use quarter inch staples. And I, am, uh, I flipped it over to the front first. I'm stapling that uh, first layer. I'm not using too many staples because I don't think there's much need for as many as Magnapan used originally. So then I flip it over, I do the other side, and then I cut a little slit where the uh, speaker terminals are. And I work the plate through that and then bring it through and screw it down. Before I did that I used like two staples inside of there. Now I'm putting it back together carefully. I'm not tightening any of the screws before I uh, finish so I can tighten them all at the end so I've got some flexibility. These little strips are a pain. I think they're about four and a quarter inch from the edge so I use a ruler to kind of help me locate the uh, staple holes but uh, yeah now I'm tightening the screws and that's basically the end after the stand is attached. And there you have it. It's all back and assembled. Totally rebuilt. My uh little trim piece decided to uh, break free when I lifted it back up but uh, nothing a little work you can't fix if you can't get those to stay I don't know what to tell you they do look fine without them well I think now it's time to try and test them out so at this point I'm just getting mad at my camera for not focusing when it's poor light and it's trying to focus on black surfaces but what I'm stressing at this point is the importance of marking the uh, frame pieces by the front and right and left sides. And you can tell if you've put this together correctly because you'll see the angle at which these sit at off of the stand. If they're sitting more straight or uh, the wrong way, you know you've put it together wrong, which is what I did. And I actually broke two screws putting it together before I realized it was uh, assembled incorrectly. 
so don't make that mistake. And that concludes the rebuild of the Magnapan MG1 speakers. I will post a uh, part 4 video, but I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it a Magnapan MG1 review. I will give you my opinion on these speakers. I'll show you how they sound through some junky microphone, however that turns out, and tell you what I like and don't like about them and what I think a good way to set them up is. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this series.